In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear good people, I'm sure you are well on this great Wednesday, the 22nd day of July, in the year of our Lord and Savior, 2020. Yesterday, we did part number four of Before You Say I Do. We are still on that path. And today we are doing part five, or episode five, of Before You Say I Do. And today, I want to talk to the great men in the house. The men who are preparing to get married. I want to talk to you. A few things that you may need to consider or maybe some questions that you may need to ask about the woman who is in your mind and what you need to know, some fundamental areas and questions to uh, ask before you say I do and you settle with her. One of the things that, of course, as I said when I was introducing to our gracious ladies, is that remember, dear men, sex language is consumed differently by women as opposed to how men consume it. Remember, dear men, for a woman, a sexual relationship means love, it means commitment, and it means compassion. Now, this is important. Love, commitment, and compassion. You need to have that wisdom as you now navigate the path of women. Because in terms of relationships and emotionality, women are more sensitive than men are. And therefore, you may also need to be in touch with the world of women. There is nothing as dangerous as a man who is a foreigner in the world of women and you want to get married. You are marrying on account of what the hearsay says, what you have had with others. When you are entering into a relationship with this woman, just as we asked the other day, please ask where she is coming from. Now, is this relationship of yours the first in her life? Are you the first man in her life? Now, remember, if you are the first man in her life, you may need to be extra cautious and extra sensitive in understanding all the needs that she has held in her life. Did she have another boyfriend? One or two or how many? And why and how and who broke the relationship? Why did it die? For example, if she had had three boyfriends and the first boyfriend left her because he thought she is rude, the second boyfriend left her because he thought she is rude. And the third boyfriend left her because he confirmed that she is rude. So chances are your girlfriend has anger problems. So before you marry her, please make sure that she gets professional help. I'm not asking you to leave her because you must be mature enough to appreciate that she never gave birth to herself. And if you are marrying a woman who have, her, who have anger issues, chances are she grew from very abusive family. Maybe a family where she grew up 
seeing her mother being brutalized by her dad and that she has had a lot of anger that is in her system. Or maybe she has ever been sexually abused and the wound has never healed because she has never shared with anybody and maybe she can't even share with you because she doesn't consider you mature enough to keep her secrets. Now, if that is the case, you may need now to get some new techniques of dealing with her. She may be angry for other reasons. Maybe she wanted to get to do something in life but she never attained. Maybe she thought all along that she would get a university uh, education, but she's still angry with herself, or maybe, maybe the parent did not expose her enough academically. So she's still angry because she has some goals and expectations that have not been met. The other area is when you are marrying a woman who may be suffering from what we call religious hangover. She wanted to become a religious woman. Something along the way didn't work. Maybe she even joined. Maybe she was sent away. Or maybe her parents refused. She, she is still angry that her mother refused her to get to become a sister, a religious sister. So you need to understand, if then your girlfriend has anger problems, please again look at the historicity of her anger. And if you love her, you'll help her to overcome that. How? You may need to get her to get a professional helper to take her through counseling so that she can be ready for marriage. It would be very unfair of you to allow a woman whom you have identified her gaps to enter into marriage before the gaps have been addressed. You'd be unfair to yourself, unfair to her, and even the people who are part of your marriage. Does this girl have a relationship with her mom? Did she grow with her mother? Is she a broken woman right from the beginning? Maybe because the mother did not love her. Is her mother her worst enemy? Please ask that question. Because again, the way she receives love, it is good that dear men, you understand this. A woman receives love depending on what she already have in terms of maternal and paternal love. And I want to especially see go out the love she received from her dad. If she doesn't have love from her dad, maybe her dad never raised her, or maybe her dad even abused her, or maybe her dad was not there, and therefore, the uncle who took care of her took her through hell and back to the extent that she doesn't feel loved. Something is wrong somewhere. Remember, a woman who may not have been adequately loved as she was growing up, she may actually almost be um, very emotionally demanding. We call them emotional weaklings. Dear men, it is such a tall order to date a woman who is an emotional weakling. This is the woman you give your best, but she will never appreciate because she has some history of a father who never loved her. Maybe of an uncle who never loved her. Maybe an elder brother who never loved her. Or maybe a man, please understand this, a man maybe she really hoped would marry her 
and she had invested her everything in that man and then the man broke her heart so she is coming to you believing that men cannot keep their words now if that is the girl you are marrying my dear you need to be extra cautious are you marrying a girl who has a bad name in the village could she be a woman who has been beating people around is she a reformed sexual worker sex worker that is is she a reformed thug because also women can be thugs is she a woman who just is accused of many weird things understand all that because it is part of your life and if you do not understand that it is not going to be fair for you it's good to ask now the other thing that you may need to pay attention to dear men is the question of age it is advisable please don't marry a very young girl marry a woman who has matured marriage is not for girls marriage is for women marriage is not for children marriage is for women women who have matured and who can make an coerced decision to engage and to commit into a long lasting relationship don't pick a high school girl who is barely 16 years and marry her during the times of our parents maybe that was possible because of the prevailing social circumstances then today no number two don't marry a woman again who is too old there are four phases of marriage life and you may need it is always advisable that either you are in the same phase or maybe you are not very far in the gap phase number one is from the years one to thirty that is phase one phase number two is thirty one to forty five phase three is forty six to sixty five plus and the last one is sixty six to eighty five plus so you can imagine uh, let us pick number one it would be advisable if she is twenty six and maybe you are 29 or maybe 30. now this is always the ideal always when you are within the same bracket why because in terms of world view you will be at par remember women emotionally mature faster than men so when again the gap is too huge to her advantage she may never respect you because she may always think you are her son so you, if the woman is even one year older than you you may realize that you may be having some conflicts because naturally she you know she matures more than you are you know faster than you and therefore you may be having problems selling your ideas to her so if she is way older than you again it is not right not right you are a 30 year old man and you are marrying a 47 year old woman or you are a 22 year old man and you are marrying a 42 year old woman no please the problem is and i want to de to deconstruct this kind of rotten philosophy that age is just a number dear men in marriage age is not just a number age is actually a crucial factor to be discovered to be discussed and debated before you say i do i want to stop there so that i can pick it up tomorrow morning uh, for part number six uh, we continue with before you say i do i'll be talking to you dear men now you can see my number there if you have questions even for part um, four and five our gracious ladies 
um, I would want to give you a session where I'll be answering your questions. Please do this. Out of the sessions that I have given, from part one up to where I'll be able to tell you that I am done with the before you say I do. When I'm done with the part number six for men, keep the questions coming. You can do them through my number, the number that you're seeing there, or my email. You can also see, the, see it there. It is kenyafr at gmail.com. Send me the questions. I will do another, a little bit long uh, episode that will be answering your questions. And I'll be glad to help you. So join me for continuation of this main talk tomorrow, Thursday. May the Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do have a productive Wednesday. Thank you.